There are two methods for doing limiting reactant problems, and today we're going to learn how to use, use rice tables, which is one way to do the uh, limiting reactant problems. To explain the concept, we're going to start with something simple, cheese, a cheese sandwich. So to make a cheese sandwich, what do you need? Um, well, here's our recipe. We're, you, for cheese sandwiches, you can make the recipe whatever you want. For chemical reactions, it's going to be specifically more defined. But the cheese sandwich you're going to make is going to include two pieces of bread and one slice of cheese, and that's going to make a cheese sandwich. So our reactants are two pieces of bread, one slice of cheese, and then we get a cheese sandwich. More specifically, we're going to write it this way. This is going to, so we're going to shorten this as our reaction. Two bread plus one cheese equals one sandwich. So the bread and the cheese, these are our reactants. And then the sandwich is our product. So unlike chemical reactions, which are specified, we're going to, you can make a cheese sandwich however you want to, but this is how we're going to make our cheese sandwich. To do this, uh, we're going to shorten this, and this is a shortened form. Now we're ready to put this in what we call a rice table. Now the rice table, it looks like this. So what we do at the front is we write our reaction. Uh, so it's a grid. First, we want to explain what the R, the I, the C, and the E are. The R stands for reaction. And you see at the top, I wrote the reaction, which is two bread plus one cheese equals one sandwich. I stands for initial. That's the amount that we start with. Now, notice, normally we'd start, if we had the perfect ratio, it would be two bread, one cheese equals one sandwich. But we're going to start with a different amount. We're going to start with four pieces of bread, one piece of cheese, and at the beginning, we haven't put them together, so we have no sandwiches to begin with. Now we're ready for the C. C stands for change. That, that means how much does the amount of bread change, how much does the amount of cheese change, and how many sandwiches do you produce? So that's a change. And then finally, E stands for end. How much do you have of each one of these things after you make the sandwich? How much cheese, bread, and how many sandwiches do you end up with? Uh, so, limiting reactant problems are important because they let you determine three things. They help you determine what the limiting reactant is, what the excess reactant with is, along with how much is left, and also the amount of product. So, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to give you the beginning amounts. The beginning amounts are 4, 1, and 0. Then we're going to see how much everything goes down by. So, when we look at this problem, we have multiple, actually what we call mole ratios. There's a mole ratio between bread and cheese, and there's a two to one ratio of bread to cheese, or a one to two ratio of cheese to bread. There's a ratio of cheese to sandwich, and there's also a ratio of bread to sandwich, and we can look at all those different ratios. But to do these problems, what we want to do is change both the reactants, which are bread and cheese, to the sandwich to see how many sandwiches are produced. And so we basically use a mole ratio from the balanced equation. So we start with four bread, which is our reactant, and we see from our balanced equation there's two bread per one sandwich. So our bread cancels out, and then we multiply that by there's one sandwich for two bread of one half, and we get two sandwiches. Now we're going to do this with the other reactant, which is the cheese, and we'll see that one cheese, and there's a one-to-one -one ratio between cheese and sandwich. This is from our balanced reaction, and we know that the cheese cancels out, and this gives us one sandwich. Well, how many sandwiches can we actually produce with this? We can't actually make two sandwiches because we don't have enough cheese. So what we actually end up making is one sandwich. And this is the amount of product that we actually produce. So the maximum number of sandwiches that you can get from this is one sandwich. And so that's the most we can make. So a couple important terms. One is the term limiting reactant. I would advise you to write this down. Limiting reactant is defined as what is the reactant that is completely used up in the reaction, and the limiting reactant also determines the amount of product and the amount of excess reactant that is used. So in, this, in our example here, cheese is our limiting reactant. Then we also have what we call an excess reactant. Now if you don't have a perfect ratio, you'll have what we call an excess reactant. An excess reactant is not used up completely, and it remains after the reaction is complete. And the excess reactant in this example is, is the bread. Uh, so, after we define these, we're going to be able to go back and let's fill out our, our, our rice table. So we've got these numbers that we just came up with, and we know that the, the, uh, 
the excess reactant doesn't actually happen. So we know that this is, the bread is excess. So that really doesn't tell us too much other than that's excess. But the cheese, which is the limiting, really determines everything. It determines how much cheese is lost, how much bread is used, and how many sandwiches are produced. So basically we use this ratio to determine everything from the, uh, in the rice table. So to do this, so we'd say the max number of sandwiches we can get is one. And when we do this, we're, uh, so we also say that cheese is our limiting reactant because it's used up completely, determines how much reactant is used, how much product or sandwich is produced in this example. The excess reactant is bread. If you have four pieces of bread, you're going to end up with bread left over. So how do you fill out this rice table? What you do is use that ratio to figure out the amount of cheese that's used. So the cheese is used up completely. And you know that the amount from cheese to bread, if you multiply cheese times bread, you're going to be multiplying it by the same ratio. You're going to be multiplying it by uh, the ratio that you get from the balanced equation, which is there's one cheese per two bread. And we do, do that, we get two, and that's where this two comes from. And we go to cheese to sandwich, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and we've done that down here, and so we know that goes up by one. This is minus because the bread goes down. This is minus one because the cheese goes down. This is plus one because the sandwich goes up. And so after that, you just fill out the rest of numbers. And at the end, we see what we have. We have two pieces of bread, no cheese, and one sandwich. So the limiting reactant is the cheese, and the excess reactant is bread with two pieces left over. So the amount of product for this is one cheese sandwich. Now let's do this with an actual reaction. So for this, I'd like you to first see if you can write the reaction for this. I wonder if anybody can recognize what this is a metal, if anybody can recognize what metal this is. And this is, of course, hydrochloric acid, which we've used several times before in lab. See if you can write the reaction. We've done this in lab. If you wrote the reaction, uh, so here's what we have. We have 10 moles of zinc, 10 moles of hydrochloric acid, and the three things we want to find out is what is the limiting reactant, how much XX reactant and the amount is left, if there is any, and how much product is produced from this reaction. So first we need to write the reaction, so let's do that. Zinc plus hydrochloric acid produces zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. So these are our two reactants. We're going to see if one of these is limiting, and these are our two products. Now to do this problem, you can change it to either product just for the purposes of this question, we're going to change it to hydrogen. You could also change it to zinc chloride. It doesn't matter. So first, see if you can balance the equation, and then put it into a rice table and see if we can get this problem going. So remember, we're starting with 10 moles of each one. So if you balance the reaction, hopefully you put the coefficient of 2 in front of hydrochloric acid. That means we have a 1 to 2 ratio of zinc to hydrochloric acid. That's a mole, not a mass ratio. And that's important because we know zinc and hydrochloric acid have different masses, and we can only compare numbers or moles when we do this reaction. So hopefully you set up your rice table. It looks like this. You have your reaction at the very top. There's a reaction of our zinc and hydrochloric acid with our reactants on one side, our products on the other. The initial amounts are, and all these, uh, when I do a rice table, whenever I write units, they're all going to be the same, but these are all going to be in moles. And I'm not going to write it every time, but I know every single number right up here is going to be a mole. So I have 10 moles of zinc, 10 moles of hydrochloric acid, and they haven't reacted yet, so I have no zinc chloride and no hydrogen gas. Now from this, hopefully you can do the mole ratio to change them both to a product. Remember we said we're going to change them to hydrogen, but you could change them also to zinc chloride really anything and just to see what's the smallest. That's going to determine what's a what, what is a limiting reactant. So what it is, I took 10 moles of zinc and changed it to hydrogen. And I noticed from this balanced reaction, there's a one-to-one -one ratio. And that's why I got a one-to-one -one ratio there. Moles of zinc cancel, and that gives me 10 moles of hydrogen gas. Now I need to do the same exact same thing with hydrochloric acid. Now you see, to go to hydrogen from hydrochloric acid, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. It's a one-to-two ratio. So I'm going to write 10 moles of hydrochloric acid, and then the ratio for that is 1 to 2. So the moles of hydrochloric acid cancel, and then I end up with 5 moles of hydrogen gas. Hopefully from this, you remember from the uh, example with the sandwich, do we get 10 moles of hydro hydrogen gas, do we get 5 moles, do we get 15 moles, how much do we actually get? Hopefully from the example of the sandwiches, you remember that we actually get 5 moles of hydrogen gas. That's a max, that's amount that's actually produced. So the amount of hydrogen gas that's actually produced is of uh, 5 moles. So we would call hydrochloric acid our limiting reactant. 
So hydrochloric acid is our limiting reactant. Now, uh, notice what I did is I actually just filled out the entire rice table because what I did is I knew since hydrochloric acid was limiting, that went down, every bit of that was used, so it went down, up, down by 10 and we ended up with zero. Now to figure out the amount of zinc that was used, I used the ratio of hydrochloric acid to zinc and the ratio of that is going to be 1 to 2 because there's 2 hydrochloric acid for every zinc. And then when I divide 10 by 2, I get 5, and that's why zinc goes down by 5. 10 minus 5 gives us 5 uh, zinc moles left over, so that's the amount of excess reactant. And we also have a, a, a 2 to 1 ratio of hydrochloric acid to zinc chloride and hydrochloric acid to hydrogen. And so those change the same uh, way zinc does, but instead of going down by 5, both of these go up by 5. And so zinc, which was 0, goes up by 5, so you end up with 5 moles at the end. Hydrogen, which is zero, goes up by five, so you have five moles of that at the end. So the five moles of hydrogen gas is very important, and also the limiting reactant is very important because it determines the amount of, of limiting reactant, all that's used, the amount of excess reactant that's used, and the amount of both products that were produced. And also, remember, we'd call their excess reactant the zinc, and of course our limiting reactant is, again, hydrochloric acid. So the amount of gas actually produced is, once again, uh, two moles of hydrogen gas. So that's a quick summary of rice tables and limiting reactants. Uh, so hopefully you won't think of rice tables anymore of just rice. It's going to be a way to do limiting reactant problems and to solve a lot of chemistry. Uh, good luck. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.